Hello learners, welcome to NIOS studio. Today we are going to start the topic genetics and society. In this topic, we are going to study how the knowledge of genetics is applied in the field of forensic sciences, agriculture, industry, biotechnology. The genetics has been in use since prehistoric times. We can divide this into three basic eras, the early ideas, the modern genetics and uh, molecular genetics. In early ideas, since the time of the 7000 before Christ or the 8000 before Christ, the people were selecting the animals and plants. The plants and animals were selected based on the desired characters like high milk producing, high yielding varieties. They were uh, selected for domestication or the cultivation. Various theories were also proposed like epigenesis, preformationism, blending inheritance and pangenesis. What does epigenesis mean? Epigenesis says the way the gene changes under the influence of an environment. Epigenesis you can understand by the example of uh, the individuals who are identical twins. Identical twins, they have a same genetic makeup but still we can find some differences in them. Now coming to preformationism, it says that organism developed from miniature version of themselves. Then according to Penn Genesis, Darwin suggested that all cells in an organism are capable of shedding minute particles he called gemmules, which circulate throughout the body and finally congregates at gonads. Then came the theory of the blending inheritance. It says that the offsprings are merely an average of the characteristics of their parents. None of the theories they hold true in the present time. Then in modern genetics, in the early 20th century, lot of work was done in that. First was the Mendel's law of inheritance that we have studied in the previous chapter. Then chromosomal theory of inheritance given by Sutton and Bovary, which clearly showed that chromosomes are the carrier of hereditary material. Then mutations are the source of genetic variation, whatever uh, lots of variability in the organism is created by the mutations. Then a population genetics, how nature selects an individual through some pressure in a population. The last era that is of the molecular genetics after 1950 onwards, Watson and Crick, they proposed the model of DNA, then uh, central dogma of molecular biology which suggests that how the genes uh, they are transcribed and ultimately translated into the protein molecules. And in this chapter, we are going to study about the genetic engineering, DNA fingerprinting, genomics and bioinformatics and gene therapy. Now, what is gene cloning and what are gene banks? You know, clone is a genetically identical individual means all the genes of the parent and the offspring are the same. And gene cloning is production of large quantity of identical individuals. Now, I will give you the example of a first cloned animal dolly sheep which was cloned in Scotland and they use the udder cells. Udder cells are the memory cells of this sheep and uh, the, in one of the udder cells as we can see in this diagram, in Finn Dorset, the nucleus was used, okay. Nucleus, uh, the cell carrying the nucleus of the memory cell was used and another Scottish black face, which was enucleated. These two cells were fused, the memory cells of these two sheep were fused through direct current, current pulse and that fused cell once it started developing into a, a till the blastocyst stage that their blastocyst is an embryonic stage of the development. At the blastocyst stage it was put into a surrogate mother's uterus and then it developed once it matured and the dolly was born. So this was the first example of a cloned animal. How it was cloned? that we are using only 
the cells from the uh, the nucleus of the memory cells which contains the chromosome it's not a normal sexual reproduction here only the memory cells of the fin dorset was used and the nucleus contained the diploid chromosomes in this organism while the uh, in the sexual reproduction we know that the gametes they take part gametes from two different parents they fuse uh, and in this no such fusion of gametes takes place and only one parent uh, is responsible for the genetic makeup of the progeny so the dolly resembled the fin dorset mother completely because the genetic makeup is the same what is recombinant dna technology recombinant dna technology is a series of procedures which are used to join dna segment to produce new genetic combinations that are of value to science medicine agriculture and industry in this we can take an example of an insulin the human insulin gene has been put into the uh, bacterium and now the human insulin is easily available in the market for the diabetic patients which was not the case earlier till we had this recombinant dna technology then gene bank gene bank is a collection of bacteria or bacteriophage clones carrying a desired gene from other organisms in their dna and they are stored at a very low temperature for their future use gene banks are we can say a bio repository which preserves the genetic material uh, in this i have written that gene banks is a collection of bacteria or bacteriophage clones it's not only this but it goes beyond that uh, we can store the plant parts through tissue culture in a gene bank and gene bank are very important in the present uh, times because we know that due to this advancement in technology the genetic variability we are losing the genetic variability which has been created by nature and nature selects the individual from the variability present in it so gene banks in the present times are very important now what are the steps involved in the production of re recombinant dna the first and the foremost is the isolation of the desired genetic material we have to isolate the desired genetic material from a cell by activity of enzymes because cell is made up of lot many things it has rna proteins carbohydrates lipids so all these materials we need to discard to get a purified genetic material then comes the cutting of the dna at specific location with restriction enzyme so what is the quality or the characteristic of restriction enzyme that is helpful in cutting the dna at specific location restriction enzymes they create the sticky ends now because they are made up of palindromic sequences what are palindromic sequences these are the group of letters which form the same words when read both forward and backward example malayalam if you read it forward it is same m a l a y a l a m and if you read backward the spelling are the same m a l a y a l a m malayalam so it is a palindromic sequence but in the case of dna the palindromic in the dna is a sequence of bases pair base pairs that read same on the two strands when orientation of the reading is kept the same in this slide you can see that on the one of the strands of dna the purple one that is from upper one 5 prime to 3 prime end the sequence is g a a t t c and in the lower strand the complementary strand from 5 prime to 3 prime n the sequence is again g a a t t c so we can say it's a palindromic sequence 
and the eco R1 enzyme will cut it from the region between G and A on both the strands as is it there in the slide. Now once the eco R1 cuts this DNA you can see in the lower portions of the cut DNA that on 3 prime end we have C, T, T, A, A and G has been separated and in the pink strand the lower pink strand the C, T, T, A, A is there and G has been separated. So you can see that the flanking zones like this T, T, A, A is the uh, sticky end. This is the sticky end on which uh, these sticky ends are created on the vectors as well as on the, the DNA which is to be inserted into this vector. Vector is basically a vehicle. It can be a plasmid or a bacteriophage which carries the GNA to the desired host. This how this eco R1 has been named. Eco R1 this enzyme is extracted from E. coli. The E the first capital letter stands for the genus and CO stands for the species and R is the strain and 1 is the order in which these restriction enzyme has been isolated. As we can see in this slide, there is a orange colored foreign DNA which is to be inserted into a plasmid. The plasmid contains the restriction site and the foreign DNA and plasmid are cut with the same restriction enzyme. As I have explained in the previous slide to make the sticky ends which will rejoin which recognizes a particular sequence of DNA called a restriction site. The restriction site occurs only once in a plasmid and is located within the LAC-Z gene, a gene necessary for metabolizing lactose. Uh, besides this, the plasmid also contains an antibiotic resistance gene so that we can select out the colonies. Uh, as you can see here that uh, the plasmid has been cut and the sticky end has been generated in the foreign DNA which is to be inserted and as well as in the plasmid. The restriction enzyme creates sticky ends that allows the foreign DNA and cloning vector to anneal an enzyme called ligase, glues the annealed fragments together. We have studied about the ligase in the DLA replication. The same enzyme is used here to ligate the foreign DNA with the plasmid. The ligated cloning vector is transformed into a bacterial host strain that is ampicillin sensitive. Now our host strain is ampicillin sensitive. If we add ampicillin in the medium, the bacteria will not grow and is missing the lac Z gene from its genome. As you can see the colonies over here, in the last plate that white colonies have a plasmid with the foreign inserted gene. Bacteria are grown on medium containing ampicillin and XGAL. XGAL is a chemical that is metabolized by the same pathway as lactose. The ampicillin kills bacteria without plasmid. Plasmids lacking the foreign insert have an intact lag Z gene and are able to metabolize X-GAL. So releasing a dye that turns the colony blue. Plasmids with an insert have a disrupted lac Z gene and produce white colonies. So that is how we will select out the transformed bacteria and use it for further whether it is we have to generate some say if we have uh, added an insulin gene we can put these bacteria and grow them in big bioreactors to increase to get a lot of quantity of um, uh, insulin which can be later later uh, purified and packaged into bottles to be supplied into the market now what is dna polymerase chain reaction we have studied recombinant dna technology and one very important step that has been used in the uh, genetic engineering is DNA polymerase chain reaction. This DNA polymerase chain reaction uses an enzyme DNA polymerase. 
this DNA polymerase enzyme is extracted from bacteria Thermus aquaticus and this bacteria grows uh, at very high temperatures and that is why this is this DNA polymerase TAC DNA polymerase is a thermostable enzyme and this is the enzyme that is used in DNA po uh, uh, polymerase chain reaction. This uh, DNA polymerase enzyme is used repeatedly to increase the copies of the desired gene. As we can see here, first the original DNA, the DNA that we want, the more copies of the DNA fragment that we want will uh, separate out at high temperatures that is 94 to 96 degrees centigrade along in the separated DNA molecule, the two templates of the DNA now that has been separated, we add primer and uh, DNA primer and the nucleotides because these nucleotides primer is required because DNA polymerase requires the primer to which the it will uh, it will add the other nucleotides at the three prime end to increase the uh, or to make the new DNA segment. Uh, as you can see in the slide that uh, annealing will take place at 68 degrees centigrade and again this is uh, the a tube will increase the temperature so that the strands again separate out and every strand will make its own complementary strand. So that is how we will increase the number of copies of the DNA fragment by the activity of TAC DNA polymerase enzyme and it is used frequently in DNA fingerprinting. Uh, now uh, we will take up the other topics in the next part of the genetic sense society and I hope now recombinant DNA technology and how DNA polymerase enzyme is used to increase the copies of the desired gene. These two concepts are very clear to you. Thank you.